Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are touching on a topic that I haven't spoken about in like months. But the last time I made a video on Classically Abbey I said to you guys like, hey do you want another one? And the response was overwhelmingly yes. And it's just gonna take me months to get around to doing it because... reasons. It's kind of going back to my roots here of kind of calling out harmful, um, I, I guess like videos and advice and um, beliefs and stuff like that. Like, it's not... It's not so much her beliefs that are the issue, but more the fact that she's kind of like forcing them onto other people and being really critical of other people's lives and judgmental and shaming people. That's what I don't like and that's what we are going to be talking about today. So I went on her channel and I found this like, oh my god, it's like the ultimate straw man video titled Feminists want you to feel guilty for staying home which could not be less true, and I think most of us reasonable people know this, but apparently at least a thousand of her fans don't, so let's talk about it. I mean, without actually watching the video, I could very simply refute this on the title alone by simply saying no. Feminists want equality of opportunity for all people of all genders. It's as simple as that, and anyone who says otherwise, like, I don't want to pull like a no true Scotsman fallacy with like a no true feminist, but if it's not about equality for all genders, it's not really feminism. And it is something to be critiqued. And when I say equality for all genders, that includes supporting all men, all women, all non-binary people, everyone. This isn't a pro-woman thing, this isn't an anti-man thing, it's a everyone deserves equality of opportunity. When it comes to careers and lifestyles and children and Kyra's chewing her toy next to me and it's very loud and very cute, aren't you baby? <laughs> but when it comes to talking about people with careers and kids and lifestyles and all this kind of thing, it's not a matter of all women should do this and all men should do this, but it's about supporting everyone no matter what lifestyle they want and trying to make sure it's possible for them and that they have the opportunities to go for it if that's what they want. It's about understanding that people can and should be able to choose their own lives for themselves and not be restricted or defined or limited by outdated arbitrary gender roles. I mean, I could just leave it at that, I guess, but I don't know about you guys, but I am in need of a giggle, so let's watch Abby's video together. And welcome to today's video, where we're going to be talking about how feminism has sold out traditional women. So, first things first, no, it hasn't. So let's give you an analogy that I think everyone can understand. Um, I can buy and eat and enjoy caramel ice cream without it meaning that I hate strawberry ice cream. There is room for all kinds of ice cream in the world and just because you eat one kind it doesn't mean you hate the other kind. Just because you prefer one kind doesn't mean you can't sometimes indulge in the other kind. Just because you like one kind it doesn't mean other people can't eat another kind. I personally love bubblegum ice cream even though I know it divides a lot of people's opinions but just because I'm enjoying bubblegum ice cream, it doesn't mean I'm gonna force everyone else to enjoy bubblegum ice cream. Just because I hate something that's traditionally loved like chocolate ice cream, it doesn't mean I'm gonna stop other people from having chocolate ice cream. It doesn't mean I'm gonna judge other people for eating chocolate ice cream. It doesn't mean I'm weird for not liking chocolate ice cream, although you may disagree on that point. The point is I shouldn't be forced to eat chocolate ice cream if I don't like chocolate ice cream. Just like I'm not gonna force anyone to eat bubblegum ice cream if they don't like bubblegum ice cream. We can all eat the ice cream we want to eat. There's room in the world for every kind of ice cream. Now replace ice cream with anything else like gender roles and work and sexuality preferences and all kinds of things and we're all good. You kind of get the idea. I mean, as long as it's not like harming anyone and it's not like, I don't know, baby flavoured ice cream, then we're good. And it's the same for other things like, you know, I mean, all lifestyle choices and careers and stuff are valid, but if your lifestyle choice and career choice is murdering babies, that's not good. You see what I mean? As long as it's not harming anyone, it's all good. We can all eat all the ice creams. Lately, I've been thinking a lot about how women who want to stay at home and who have figured out that staying at home would make them happier feel like feminism has sold them out or has made them feel guilty for actually wanting to stay at home more. You know, I'm actually on board with this point of Abby's. I think it's quite good. No one should be ashamed if it's their choice. And yeah, I mean, 
potentially maybe Yuppie's not that bad. I really want to chat about it with you today and talk about why it's natural for women to want to stay at home. Yeah, she ruined it. So today I want to talk about how feminism is actually hurting women on their path to happiness. So what I want to talk about is the idea that feminism has told women that there's a wage gap, that they've been oppressed, that they have to be in the workplace because other women before us have fought for that. Well, I mean, she's oversimplifying and just like kind of mocking for the sake of it without really touching on any of the details or intricacies of the topic. I mean, there is a wage gap. It's a lot more complex than people think, and it's just not just as simple as women earn less. There are way more other factors to do with age and education history, um, race. There's a huge, huge gap between cisgender women and transgender women that isn't okay. The wage gap is there, but not there for everyone. It's different between different careers. It's a very, very complicated issue, but the point is, not really okay for Gabby, uh, Gabby. Abby. It's not really okay for Abby to just dismiss it like this. Also, looking at other points, women have traditionally been systematically oppressed by a patriarchal society, so I don't know why she's trying to deny it. Women have fought and died for us to have the same freedoms and rights as men. Don't know why she might be trying to deny that or minimize that, but whatever. But as far as I know, no one is saying women need to work. And here's kind of where I might get a little political and people might not like this so much, but I stand by most of what I'm about to say. Um, to the best of my knowledge, I think this is fair. Hello. Hi, are you trying to be part of the video? So if anything, what I would argue is that it's not feminists who m make women feel like they need to work but more likely to be the fault of conservatives like Abby, who won't support a basic livable minimum wage, who don't support government support for lower and working class people, who don't support uh, universal healthcare, who have screwed over the economy so much that to support a family you almost always need two incomes nowadays, and a, a whole bunch of other issues. I would say conservatives have screwed over so many people, the average person, the working class person, screwed them over so much that most women don't have the luxury of deciding whether they want to work or not. You just have to, or you die. It's not feminists guilting people into thinking they need to work, it's that the entire political system has screwed over so many people that we have to work. Choosing to work is not a luxury, it's something you have to do to get by. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute, but I also just want to go back to the point for a second that if feminists are shaming someone for choosing to be a stay-at-home mum, for example, that's not okay and that is something to criticise, but that's not an all-feminist thing. That's a, you're a douchebag who's trying to use feminism as, a, as an excuse for it kind of thing. And again, don't want to fall into like a no true Scotsman fallacy, but like to me there's a difference between like a feminist point of view and a douchebag who's trying to use feminism to push their agenda. And if you're shaming stay-at-home mums, you're on the douchebag side of things. And if you just want people to be able to do what they want, that's the feminist side of things, you know? Don't know if I explained that properly. Words are hard today, I'm very tired. I don't think it used to be as controversial to say that having your priorities in order is a good thing. That putting your faith and your family and your community over your work is actually kind of natural. And it's more natural to the way that we as humans function. Oh, for God's sake, when are we going to stop pretending that there's a natural way to be human, to be a person, to live in this completely unnatural society? There's not one right way, there's no one singular way, and we need to stop pretending that there is and shaming other people when it doesn't fit our ideals or our view of what natural is. You know, it is actually good to like know your own priorities and be able to... Uh, I, uh, I guess like put them into practice. Is that is that the word? You yeah, I, I guess I guess that's right. Yeah, knowing that stuff, being able to exercise that stuff, very important, very good. Fully support it, but not everyone has the same priorities as everyone else. Not all women have the same priorities as other women. Not all men have the same priorities as other men. Not all non-binary people have the same priorities as other non-binary people. It just doesn't work that way. Everyone's an individual and everyone wants and likes and prioritizes different things. I just, I don't, I don't get how Abby doesn't see this. In my view, her saying it's not natural or normal 
for me or someone like me to not want kids and to imply that we're not natural if we don't want to be stay-at-home mums is as bad as the people who shame actual stay-at-home mums who choose to do that, you know? Neither's okay. And I don't think that finding meaning through work is a bad thing. Of course not. I find meaning through my work. I think that having a passion for your work is great. But what I want to talk about specifically today is the women who find that they aren't as happy in a full-time position at work and would like to stay at home and feel wrong or guilty about it because the feminist movement has made them feel like that is wrong. You know, I'd, I'd actually love if someone could give me like a study or some information about like what studies have been done into this stuff but I would argue that it's more likely that the women who don't want to work but still do aren't doing it because they're feeling guilted by feminists but they're doing it because economically they don't have any other choice. Just a guess but an educated guess. I think those women and men who don't want to work but do are doing it because they have no other choice if they want to survive and live and not be homeless. And the fact that Abby doesn't realise this, I think, says a hell of a lot about her clearly incredibly sheltered and privileged upbringing. And I don't like throwing the privilege word around very often. Um, I think saying like, oh, you seem privileged, can be kind of used to shame people unnecessarily. But at the same time, when you used correctly and accurately, it's a very important thing we have to kind of be aware of and take into account. And I don't know if I'm making sense. I'd argue that like while on the surface, me and Abby probably look quite similar to the outsider in that at a guess, I'd say Abby's maybe like mid thirties and I'm late twenties. So we're probably roughly like same age ish, probably at similar like kind of stages in our life in that sense. On the outside, I'm assuming we both come across as like fairly well-spoken. Um, we both are white women, so we do have that privilege there. There's no denying that. Um, I'd say we both at least seem to be fairly well-educated, even though her views are mm, not the point. The point is, I think on the surface, we probably look quite similar to the outsider, but not when you look at our upbringings and backgrounds. I would say, Abby probably has one of the most privileged backgrounds and upbringings that a person can have. I don't think she's ever had to worry about money a day in her life. And I think that shows in all her views or opinions and all this stuff she's trying to push. You know, whereas I am from a proper working class Yorkshire family and we did have to worry about money on the daily and it was usually a game of what can't we afford this week. So, because I grew up in that kind of environment, it wasn't just me and my family I saw struggling, but it was lots and lots of other people and other families and I've seen this stuff, I've lived this stuff, I understand this stuff, I know what it's like and that's why I think I have a lot of empathy for people, <laughs> you know. But can you imagine if I just turned around and said, you know what, I don't fancy working anymore, I think I'm just gonna maybe concentrate on popping out a few babies and yeah, that's what I'm gonna do with my life. What, what would I actually do? You can't just decide to stop working because like, where would I live? What would I eat? <laughs> this just basic stuff, like without a job, without income, what do you do other than go be homeless on the street? I don't have parents who can just suddenly pay for everything for me. I don't have savings I can fall back on. I don't have a rich husband like Abby clearly does that's just gonna pay for everything for me. For me, yes, I love my job and my career and it's my choice to do this and I'm very, very lucky in what I do and I'm very grateful for this opportunity and I love it, it's wonderful. But at the same time, you have to remember that me working at all is not a choice, it's a necessity. And that's the case for so many people out there, not just women, but just people in general. And it sounds so weird to have to say this, that working isn't a choice, it's a necessity to survive, but I honestly get the impression that Abby doesn't understand this, and she doesn't see this, and it it's bizarre to me, because I've been very lucky in that I have this job, and I've had government support to get a good education and stuff like that, but so many women and people around the world don't have those options, they don't have those opportunities, and that's what feminism is fighting for, to make sure that women do have those choices and do have those opportunities and to make sure if a woman wants to be a stay-at-home mum she can do that, if a woman wants to work she can do that 
But the truth is, most people don't have the option. This actually, like this whole thing, it reminded me of when I was making my notes for this video and like watching through, it reminded me of that guy on Question Time who, um, so he got really, really mad that some proposed bill was trying to charge the top 5% of earners in the UK a bit more tax on anything above 80,000 pounds, right? And he was getting mad saying, you're gonna tax me, you're gonna tax me. I'm not in the top 5% of earners. I'm not, I'm not. And the MP was just like, well, do you earn over 80,000 pound? He's like, yes. He was like, well, then you're in the top 5% of earners. Bearing in mind this was earnings, not accumulated wealth. I'll, you know, I'll just play you the clip. I'd like to call out labor as liars. I am one of them people that he will tax more and I am nowhere near in the top 5%. So I'm calling you a liar right now. That 5% is a lie, right? I am nowhere near that. And you are going to income tax me as an employee. You're not going after the billionaires, you're going after the employees where it's easy money because it's PAYE, I have no choice. And that, that, that's just not, um, I'm afraid. On that, you're mistaken. We're not going to raise income tax for anybody apart from the top 5% of earners. I we're am going not to in the top 5% so of earners. So we're not going I, to increase I, your income tax? But you are, because I've read your policy. It's above £80,000. And I am nowhere near in the top 5%, let me tell you. I'm not even in the top 50%. And that's why we're not going to increase your income tax. And I... Th so hang on, let's just be clear. So, so you're, you're suggesting you would raise income tax on those earning over £80,000. You're saying that would affect you because you earn over that sum? Yes. So you earn over £80,000? Yes, and I'm not in the top 5%. Yes, you are. Mm. It, that, I think that is the no, top I'm 5%, not. isn't it? I'm not. And the thing is, like, yeah, this man shouting his mouth off, he might not necessarily feel rich. And he's right, he's not a millionaire, he's not a billionaire, he's... Shush. <laughs> he's not quite that level of rich, he's not that accumulated wealth rich, but what I don't think he realises is that compared to most people in the UK, he is very well off, he is doing very, very well. And, I mean, the, the stats show that I found, um, yeah, 95% of people in the country earn £75,300 per year or less. And... I think, if I'm right in remembering, those stats are without taking into account the people who are like on benefits and don't earn anything at all. So, if you include them into the mix, he was actually going to be in like the top 3% of earners or something like that. And just because he doesn't feel rich, that doesn't mean he's not doing very, very well compared to most people. And I think a lot of people, when they get in that kind of like privileged position, they can only see things from their kind of point of view. And this was a big kind of argument that me and Dan used to have quite a lot when we were together, because again, he he comes from a what I would class a fairly well-off family, um, at least well-off compared to like what I'm used to. And he would always be like, yeah, but why should I be taxed more on my earnings when it's barely enough for me? And I'm like, you know, 100 odd thousand a year is not barely enough for anyone. Like, if you can't control your spending at that amount, that's your problem. But when there are literally millions of people there who are living below the poverty line, who can barely feed their children, who need government support and benefits to live to be able to eat, to pay their bills, to keep the heating on, to run their water. Why wouldn't you want to give a little bit of your like, honestly, excess money to help them survive? I, sorry, I'm getting off topic here. The point is, I think this man in this clip and people like Abby, who are doing well for themselves, don't realise how bad a lot of other people have it. They don't realise how much the people at the lower end are struggling. They just think, well, I'm doing okay, and I see these billionaires and I'm not them, so clearly I'm poor. And it's like, no. Compared to the majority of people in the country, compared to millions of people, you are living like a god. And I think you just need a little more compassion for the people who don't have the privileges and choices and opportunities that you have. The fact that someone like Abby even has a choice whether she works or not is an incredible privilege and I don't think she realises that.
Something that we're constantly sold by the feminist narrative is that there's a glass ceiling and that women can't actually get to the top levels of their careers because they're not being allowed to by an oppressive patriarchy. This is actually not the case and it's been proven to be false. Women find success more holistically than that. They don't find success in pursuing a career trajectory to its very highest peak. Do you guys remember the video I made not too long ago? Um, I think, I think it was the one about Hungary and their ridiculous laws to stop um, gay couples from adopting children. Horrific stuff. But in that video, um, I spoke a little bit how while when you look at stats and stuff, there might be trends that say, well, group X is more likely to feel this way and group Y is more likely to feel this way. And while it can help us understand a lot of things to see these trends and it can help us find patterns and it can to some extent inform certain policies and all kinds of stuff like that and it could be useful to know, we still have to remember that there are real people involved in this and even though the majority of a certain group might be here, we can't forget that there's also actual human beings who are down here and up here on like all kind of ends of a spectrum in statistics and their experiences aren't to be discounted just because the majority might fall into a certain group, if that makes sense. The other video explained it better, I'll link it in the comments um, and I'll link it in the video description. So what I'm trying to say here is when it comes to like talking about um, men and women finding satisfaction in their jobs, while maybe, you know, X amount of women find less satisfaction and Y amount of men find more satisfaction here, you, have to, you also have to remember that there are plenty of women who... My earring just fell out. You also have to remember that there are plenty of women who do find a hell of a lot of satisfaction in their job and a hell of a lot of men who don't find satisfaction in just a job or career. So there are still people in both groups at both ends of the spectrum and you can't just discount their experiences because you're trying to prove a point. Many women realize that if they were to get to the highest level of their careers, they would have to leave behind other things that they love and that make them happy and that bring them fulfillment. They may have to spend less time at home and less time with their children. And so many women choose not to get to the highest level of their careers. It's not that they're being held back by the patriarchy. They're actually choosing to do what brings them fulfillment. With lines like this, can she just stop saying women already and just start saying people? Please, because men who pursue careers like this, non-binary people who pursue careers like this, they also have to make these same sacrifices. And I don't get why she isn't talking about that. It's relevant to the conversation. You can't just ignore it because, again, it doesn't fit your agenda. Feminists will tell you that they are only fighting for women to be able to do whatever they want, whether that be in the workplace or stay at home. But the fact of the matter is that feminists will also tell women who want to stay at home and who want to really embrace womanhood and motherhood that they have internalized misogyny. No, look, Abby, I, I don't think you have internalized misogyny because you want to stay home with your kids. I think you have internalized misogyny because you're so stuck in believing outdated gender roles are still important. I think you have internalized misogyny because you constantly judge women who are different to you in any way. I think you have internalized misogyny because you try and force your preferred way of living on other people by saying it's only natural or normal for them, want to, for them to want to do what you want them to do. And I think you have internalized misogyny because you've gone this whole video without talking about stay-at-home dads and non-binary parents. And that the reason they want to stay at home is because their brains have been brainwashed and co-opted to believe what the patriarchy wants them to believe, which is that they can't succeed outside of the home and so they should be in the home. No, no, no. I, I would never say that all women who choose to stay at home with their kids are brainwashed. Not at all. But again, you can't discount the outliers. So years ago now, probably before a lot of you were even aware of this channel, I made a video response to this fundamentalist Christian couple where the woman, bless her, she, she was very quiet, very kind of like timid. She was all like, women need to stay home. Women need a man to control them, blah, blah. And the man was just kind of like talking over her and he was clearly very controlling. And it was, it was a kind of scary video to watch actually. You end up having a young woman that learns not to be a keeper at home, but rather to be uh, covetous. Uh, we have a perfect example here. What was it 12 years essentially? Roughly. 
from the time she got out of high school till the time that she married me, till the time she got saved and then married me. And that time was spent with... Well, it was spent at first after I got saved. You know, I was constantly brainwashed into, into this motto of, you have to get a job. Mm -hmm. You need to get your own apartment. Get a job. You can't stay here forever. Yeah. You know, and that caused me to not have the the time or opportunity to even study the bible after the lord saved me and um i do still worry about that woman and what she's going through to this day but the point is you can't look at a video like that and see a couple like that and see a woman like her and not think she was brainwashed if you want to use that word into believing those things it's clear that <laughs> I don't think it really is her choice to be stuck at home with this husband and not do anything and not go out anywhere. I think she just doesn't understand that there's another option, there's another choice. I don't think she feels empowered to make any other decision and, and so on. And there are women like that. And you can't discount their experiences. You can't just ignore their experiences. Um, but again, yeah, you can't just say all women are brainwashed or all women are... It, Again, you need to look individual by individual. You need to look on a case-by-case -case basis. Because feminists want to believe that men and women are the same, it makes sense that they're going to encourage women to find their happiness through economic success. But the fact is that men and women are different. Oh, again, I don't know how many times I can say this. No. Feminists simply believe all genders should have... Um, should be treated equally and have access to the same equal opportunities. That's it. Feminists also realize that all people are different and individual, and you can't just lump all people into stereotypes and binary groups and expect them to all act the same. It's ridiculous. So it's really important to recognize that if women find their fulfillment in the home and as mothers, that makes sense because women and men are different. Now I do want to get something clear right off the bat. I do not believe that women have to stay at home. And this is something I have said on my channel a hundred times. So anyone who accuses me of saying that women need to be at home, they're wrong. I don't believe that. She says this, but it's like, no, okay, no, you're just saying I'm unnatural if I don't want to be a stay at home mum. You're saying I'm unnatural if I don't want to be a mum at all. It's like, you're not necessarily being explicit, but the shaming is there. <laughs> oh. And then for the rest of the video, she just talks about her mum who had it all and how her mum was a career woman, but she still put her kids first and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, then she repeats some more stuff and it gets kind of boring. And so that's where I figured I would end this today. But um, I don't know, it kind of feels good to have a little bit of a rant again. You know, it's, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Been a while since I did a video like this and I do kind of miss my kind of like atheist and more kind of social commentary type roots and videos that I made when I first started this channel and um, I know so people still like the like poetry videos and stuff and I still love making them and I, I don't know I still I, I like doing a bit of everything you know it's all it's all good I feel like for the people who are new to my channel there are probably like a ton of disclaimers I need to make that I've said in videos like three years ago but they just haven't seen and so they'll probably get angry and be like oh, but here are you to judge her you're just judging, judging her life and you I'm like no I'm not judging Abby's life I'm judging the fact that she's shaming women, women for not doing what she wants. I'm judging her, pushing her judgmental views on everyone. I'm never going to sit here in a video and say, this is how you should live your life. This is what you should do. These are the goals you should have. But I am going to say, I think you should figure those things out for yourself. And I am going to say, if you're judging someone for having different goals and stuff to you, then that's not okay, you know? Again, it all comes down to, are you harming people or not? And look at sexuality as an example. No matter what your sexuality is uh, and what your preferences are, whether you're straight or gay or bi or pan, whether you're more into monogamy or polyamory or whatever, none of that matters because you're not hurting anyone. It's all consensual and it's all good. Whereas pedophiles, they also can't control their sexual preferences, but there's a victim and a child is getting hurt. And that I will judge and call out. So that's kind of the difference, you know, I'm not saying there's a right and wrong way to live in terms of anything specific. I'm simply saying, like, don't be judgmental and don't hurt people, you know? And that's what I kind of think all my views and beliefs kind of come down to. But obviously things get more complicated than that. And yeah, it's, it's 
whole whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, I know. I'm rambling now. There's a whole probably a whole bunch of other stuff I've not said that I think people will try and get angry about. But yeah, I think basically the things to remember before people get mad about stuff is that like I have good intentions and I mean well and I never want to like shame anyone who hasn't done anything wrong. So that's a thing. Words. Anyway, I'm going to shut up and let you guys get on with your day and I'm going to go and try and edit this. <laughs> Oh god, um, because unlike Abby, you know, I, I have to work for a living, I've got bills to pay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so snarky. Okay, I'm done, I'm shutting up. Thank you for watching, thank you for being here, thank you for sticking with me, and um, all that exciting stuff. Please don't forget, um, I have the new poetry merch available in my merch store if you want to check that out. I absolutely love my like t-shirts that I've got and they're amazing. I've been wearing them everywhere. Uh, yeah, there'll be a link on screen and down in the description below if you want to check them out. But for now, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around and I will see you guys again very soon. Hope you all have a lovely, lovely rest of your day.